Wow! I can't believe this is the final and last episode of Drumming Through the Decades. This episode will cover 2010 until 2022. Our current times are bringing a social and cultural shift in areas of women's rights and gender equality, as well as a technological shift in music and drumming. The past two decades of rapid innovation in digital technologies have disrupted the music business at every level. Technology has changed how people create and listen to music. Composers can even produce film scores from their home studios. Especially with the global COVID pandemic, musicians were forced to rethink how they can reach their audiences. And now we see more musicians play for fans around the world through live streamed performances. We've also seen a massive upswing in social media with huge influencers, which has given a new path for female drummers to make themselves heard. This, in turn, inspires a whole new generation to pick up the sticks and start playing because they can finally see role models that they identify with on a bigger scale than ever before. We also see studies in the positive impacts of drumming and our well-being. In this episode, I'll be giving lots of useful resources, websites, organizations, communities, and of course, we'll talk about a lot of inspiring drummers. My name is Vicky O'Neon, I'm a drummer and educator. This and much more coming up. Vicky O'Neon presents Drumming Through the Decades. this series, drumming and music itself has drastically transformed throughout the decades. Music connects us. It can be a representation of culture, emotions, political movements, a time in your life or a peek into history. Music is timeless, but it has dramatically shifted throughout the decades as it continues to give us new sounds and rhythms. The music that defines each decade is different and our culture wouldn't be the same without each and every piece of music developed throughout history. Just consider the evolutions over some of the more recent decades we've covered in this series. Now, from 2010 onwards, we see pop remaining a top genre with performers like Billie Eilish, Ed Sheeran and Adele continuing to dominate. We even see a resurgence of nostalgia for earlier genres. For example, new young bands like Greta Van Fleet in the US are often cited as the new Led Zeppelin. And the 2020 album release for Kylie Minogue called Disco was a complete homage to disco music. This period has also seen the growing popularity of newer genres like K-pop, Gangnam Style, Lo-Fi, Reggaeton Afrobeat Trap And Drill However, a noticeable change over the past decade is the challenge from artists and listeners alike of what is a music genre today? Has music evolved too far past the common labels? Genre feels increasingly irrelevant to the way that we think about, create and consume art. Few contemporary musicians pride themselves on a pure or traditional approach to form and most pull purposefully from assorted histories and sounds. One example of this is Childish Gambino's unforgettable powerful song This Is America, mixing gospel, hip-hop, afrobeat and trap. This is America. Don't catch you slipping on. Go! Don't catch you slipping on. Look what I'm whipping on. This is America. Woo! Don't catch you slipping on. Go! Don't catch you slipping on. Look what I'm whipping on. Rock, this is America. Whether an album belongs in one category or another, rock or alternative, pop or R&B, is often hotly debated by award nomination committees now. 
Genre was once a practical tool for organizing record shops and programming radio stations, but it seems unlikely to remain one in the era in which all music feels like a hybrid. This can be seen even in Spotify's playlists that are increasingly named genres like songs to sing in the car, mood booster, and chill hits. Today's rising artists are different. For the first time in history, we're being introduced to a new generation of artists who don't know life without the internet. Everyone is exposed to everything and influence happens freely across borders. Even artists embedded in a local scene will take inspiration from artists around the world. Right now, in recording studios and bedrooms across the world, young artists are coming up with ideas that are going to require fans, record labels and music corporations with decades of history to rethink how they are operating. It's going to be really exciting to see what's coming next. Looking at the next generation of drummers, some fiercely notable girls are rising stars in the drum community around the world. Nandi Bushel is a social media celebrity who is taking the world by storm with her drumming skills. By the age of 11, she had already achieved more than most drummers could dream of in a lifelong career, performing alongside famous musicians like Lenny Kravitz and the Foo Fighters with Dave Grohl. Some other incredible kids on the rise are Yoyoka, Geneva London, Cheetah, and Annabelle. Thanks to incredible role models like Sheila E, generations of drummers are being inspired to pick up the sticks and start playing. It's virtually impossible to highlight all of the amazing female identifying drummers out there today. Here's a small selection of a few of them, and you will find a list of some more to check out in the YouTube description. Evelyn Glennie, Annika Nils, Cherise Osei, Caitlin Califas, Helen De La Rosa, Emmanuel Caplet, Pocket Queen, Madame Gandhi, Cora Coleman Dunham. Another positive trend is the growth of the female drum community. Hit Like a Girl is an amazing platform for this community, providing year-round, worldwide advocacy of all types of drumming, from drum sets and beat making to world and marching percussion, including an annual competition. They have done in-depth research into the growth of the size, influence, playing level and visibility of the female drum community. According to Facebook analytics, the female share of the US-Canada drum market was between 20 and 25% in 2020. In some parts of the world, such as China, girls are estimated to be as much as 45 to 50% of the market. This indicates a significant increase in the number of female drummers from the 5 to 10% estimated in 2012. Another way of measuring the growth of the female drum market is by the growing numbers of female drummers that have become influencers over the past few years. Data shows that women are becoming as influential as the male drummers and, in some cases, even more so. Ever-expanding drum technology includes electronic drums and triggers as well as the growing realm of touchpad devices and software that are used to create rhythm in contemporary music. This process is called beat making or finger drumming and is playing an increasingly important role in the future of drumming. Drums have always been one of the most diverse and progressive of all musical instruments and beat making is merely a next organic step for the future. There are lots of great educational platforms out there to learn about drumming and beat making today. Melodics is an app that adapts to your abilities and musical tastes to help you get better both at drums and finger drumming and with instant feedback playing great sounding music from modern genres. It makes the learning process for beat making and drumming super fun. Drumming is also making its way into virtual reality with VR rhythm games like Beat Saber. 
It takes place in a surrealistic neon environment and features the player slicing blocks representing musical beats of adrenaline pumping music as they fly towards you. Your sticks are a pair of contrasting colored sabers. Drumio is an education-based membership website for drumming. You get access to weekly coaching sessions by world-class drum instructors, step-by-step -step practice plans, thousands of video lessons, and access to a large drum community. Some of the amazing coaches include Domino Sant'Antonio in pop and performance, Dorothea Taylor in drumline discipline, and Sarah Thor in exploring new ideas. Ableton Live is the most used digital audio workstation in the world and one in four music producers use Live as their primary music production software. It's also a great tool for drummers, especially for live performances such as live looping, which is becoming more and more popular amongst musicians. I've recently done a live looping workshop for Ableton, which was a collaboration with Drumio. According to music industry reports, there is an even greater disproportion of girls and women in the area of music production than there is among the general population of musicians, songwriters and drummers. Research shows that only 2.6% of all producers are women, whilst the percentage for songwriters is 12.5% and for artists, 21.7%. Looking at Grammy nominees from 2013 to 2020, only 11.7% were women. However, there are more and more organizations and platforms who are working to change this. 2% Rising is an online networking hub for women and non-binary studio engineers and producers. A Facebook-based platform has been launched in response to the widely reported statistic that female producers only make up 2% of the industry. Beats by Girls is a global organization that is empowering the next generation of women and gender expansive individuals through music and technology. They do this by giving participants access to the tools, resources, education and community necessary to foster growth. The Women of Rock Oral History Project is a collection of digital interviews and written transcripts documenting the lives and careers of women in rock music, focusing primarily on artists who have been left out of the popular rock narrative. By creating space for women, trans and gender non-conforming artists to share their stories, the project contributes to the expansion of a more inclusive and accurate popular rock narrative. Women in Rock, how you can't say it any better than that. The Women's International Music Network brings women together from all facets of the music industry. The organization produces events, creates opportunities for performance and networking, and works to bring the conversation around diversity in the industry into the forefront. Founded by Women's International Music Network, the She Rocks Awards honors trailblazing women from all areas of the industry. Each year, the She Rocks Awards creates a one-of-a-kind event that shines the spotlight on women who stand out in the industry and offers a high-energy evening of performances and networking opportunities. TomTom Tom Magazine is the only media company in the world dedicated to female and gender non-conforming drummers. TomTom Tom is more than just a quarterly print magazine. It also has a website, social media community, events and more. It serves as the ultimate go-to guide for the latest information about girl drummers and beat makers around the globe. The Oral History of Female Drummers is a live performance art project first performed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 2013. The project is designed to explore and express the undocumented history of female drummers. Since then, projects inspired by the Oral History of Female Drummers have been performed in museums across the U.S. The girls' rock camps that we talked about in the previous episodes also continue to grow all over the world, changing so many people's lives. 
In the early 2000s, the drum market peaked in sales, but between 2006 and 2019, there was a 45% decline in sales of acoustic drum kits. However, since the onset of COVID-19, major retailers have reported that isolation as a result of the coronavirus has led to an increased demand for musical instruments again, which at least is something good that came out of the lockdowns around the world. We have also seen more and more research that shows the positive impacts of drumming on our well-being. Research by the Royal College of Music has found that drumming and making music can be a powerful tool for promoting mental health and contributes to a wider evidence base around music and well-being. The research shows that a 10-week program of group drumming workshops reduces depression by as much as 38% and anxiety by 20%. The participants completed questionnaires measuring depression, anxiety, stress and mental well-being and saliva samples were analyzed to test their biological responses. The research is the first of its kind to bring together psychological and biological results to paint a more complete picture of how making music benefits mental health. The benefits were still evident three months later, suggesting that drumming could be an economical yet effective intervention for mental health services. There's more emphasis on this today, with charity-based drumming events that raises money for mental health whilst inspiring people to start drumming. I was a part of a 2021 BBC Drumathon challenge with BBC weather presenter Owain Wynn Evans, which became the most successful 24 hour challenge in the 41 year history of raising money for the BBC charity Children in Need, which raised almost 4 million pounds. <laughs> is becoming a part of the fabric of society as we see more and more drummers and drum stories on our screens. Count Me In is an exhilarating documentary film that celebrates the art of rock drumming, featuring drummers like Roger Taylor from Queen, Chad Smith from Red Hot Chili Peppers, Stuart Copeland from The Police, Cindy Blackman from Santana and Lenny Kravitz, Keith Moon from The Who, Samantha Maloney, Emily Dolan Davies, and Jess Bowen. The documentary takes you on an uplifting journey through some of the most iconic music ever created, focusing on drummers, passions, culture, and awe-inspiring energy. I'm in the band, Nasty Cherry, is a reality show on Netflix. The six-part show follows the progress of alt-pop group Nasty Cherry, who has been flung together by artist Charlie XCX. The story covers from when the band first meets and move into a house together to when they play their first live show four months later. Debbie Knox Hewson is the drummer in the band. Other great drum movies from this era to check out are Sound of Metal, Whiplash, Beware of Mr. Baker, Sound of Noise, and A Drummer's Dream. An event that brought the drum community together in the UK was the campaign This Time We Play Together that celebrated the delayed European Championship 2020 tournament by capturing the joy of live sport and entertainment through drumming on a massive scale. The production included employing 190 experienced drummers and my role was to play drums on the top of a bus stop, which is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience. So, what is the future of drumming? Are drummers going to be replaced by technology in the next 10 to 20 years or will the advancements of sampling, drum machines, virtual drum studios and artificial intelligence make drumming even more accessible, fun and versatile? I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Currently, the majority of mainstream music in the world contains electronic and virtual instruments like drum samples, drum plugins or drum machines. Acoustic drums have already been replaced in countless of genres. However, live audiences still want to see live drums being played because of the raw element and energy the drummers bring. 
If drummers want to perform mainstream music and sound good, they often need to incorporate electronic elements to make the drums fit in with the sound of the music. One way to do this is to use drum triggers, which is an electronic transducer that can be attached to a drum and triggers an electronic sound from a drum module when you hit the drums. This is called hybrid drumming. It's possible that session drummers that do not adapt electronic elements into their setup may find it difficult to get session work in the future, particularly if they are playing mainstream styles of music. Another theory is that mainstream genres are using so many virtual and electronic instruments in their productions that this practice eventually will implode on itself, leading to a revival of purely acoustic recordings. Hopefully, acoustic drums will stay in demand as they are incredibly fun to play and they give you the best depth of sound compared to electronic drums and pads. The way that the acoustic drums reverberate around the room just has a more natural feel. There are certain styles of music where it will be almost impossible to replace a live acoustic drummer. Jazz and certain genres of rock and metal are examples of this. Another consideration is that recent releases of artificial intelligence are showing that drum beats can be automatically generated along with full musical compositions. This technology is improving at a rapid rate and we could see some serious developments in this over the next few years. It's difficult to know what sort of effect that will have on the future of music in general. Drumming through the decades. Wow, what an epic journey this has been. Starting 2000 BC, taking us all the way up to the 2020s. As we discovered in the first episode of this series, drumming has existed and continued to evolve over thousands of years. The modern drum set is just over a hundred years old, yet rhythm and the methods of expressing it date back centuries. Drums, drummers and drumming have a long history of adapting and finding new ways to evolve, which we continue to do moving into the 2020s. So much has happened and so many incredible women have paved the way and inspired generation after generation. It remains to be seen whether the day will come when female musicians will become known simply as musicians and receive the well-deserved recognition that their male counterparts have when the next history page is being written. It's still common that female drummers are considered a novelty despite their proven ability to match the chops of their male counterparts. And unfortunately, women can still be victims of sexism in the music industry. At least we're now seeing more diverse career opportunities than before. And I can from first-hand experience say that I can see the times are changing even in my 10-year-long career. And I'm grateful to be a drummer today and I'm really excited to see what the future holds. I hope you've liked this series. It's been such an epic journey to embark on, researching this content, discovering so many new role models and learning so much on the way. Do check out the useful links to resources and inspiring drummers in the YouTube description below. And I would love to hear what's inspired you the most watching this series. And if you have any other thoughts, please share them in the comments. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, please go back to the beginning and enjoy the journey. Like and subscribe to my channel for more creative content from me. And I hope to see you here very, very soon again. Lots of love. Take care. Bye bye.